<laughs> Hello, how's it going? Now, uh, I had a question on the forums. That's that thing that a lot of you guys don't use because you're lazy. Um, and what it is was just asking me, well, how do you do a simple lighting uh, setup? Now, I'm not Howard Lincoln, so therefore I'm not a kind of guru of lighting. Okay, fair play. But uh, I can show you how to do a quick, easy, dirty three point lighting setup using a mental ray. So, what I've got is these are my cabinets, and I'm going to choose. Uh, Let's say this and this. Just do a quick control I and get rid of the rest. Except for this top bit. I quite like this top bit actually. So I mean I'm already started dicking around with it. Right, so grab these, get rid of them. Bye bye. Now I'm gonna take this, put this part on top of it. And uh we'll just expand it a little bit. Probably get away with a quick stretch without breaking it too much. There we go. Okay, so we've changed it now from a simple table into an office desk by the looks of things, but you know, fair play. Now, what I'm going to do is first of all just uh, move this over here and we'll do a default kind of render. So I'm going to hit F10. I've got Mental Ray on, so I'll just make sure it's on by clicking Assign Renderer and F10. Under indirect illumination, I've just got it set to low. Now if I hit 8, you'll see here I'm not going to use any map, I've just got a white background. So this will kind of blow the scene out quite a lot. And just hit F9, watch what happens. Okay, so it's very flat, very uncoloured, very simple texture. I mean, very simple render, yeah, nothing exciting going on there. Uh, also, my aspect ratio is off, so I'll just switch that back to a more common aspect ratio. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a plane underneath it like this. Okay, so this gives us a simple ground and I'm going to apply just a plain white blin with no specular, no glossiness to it. Okay, so just the most simple thing. Hit F9 again. Okay, so now you can see even less lights get into this because it's blocking off the, black, the background. So we're getting some reflections and that's about it. Okay, now hit F4 and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the length and width segments to 1. There we go, and then right click it, convert to, editable polygon. I'll just grab this edge and this edge because I want to make a light box for it to sit in. And just drag them up like that. There we go, and then I'm going to grab this, this and this. Just chamfer them a little bit. And a bit more. Okay, not too much because then I can stick a turbo smooth on this fellow. There we go, and that'll just smooth it out loads. Two iterations, right click, convert to. Okay, now if I just zoom in on this again, hit F9, you'll see that, well, we get an even less desk because there's no light getting into it. Okay, it's calculating its lighting and there's not a lot of it coming through. Poor old 3DS Max, eh? All right then. Now let's uh, let's just improve the lighting for what we've got. So first of all, I want to get to a good angle where we can see our desk. So I'm just going to click here where it says perspective, show safe frames, and this is what will be coming out of our renderer. Let's get a good position on it. There we go. That looks about right, like that. And I think what I want to do as well is just increase the size of this piece here. That way it covers it completely, okay, so we don't have any background coming in. Now if I render it, bit dark, not a lot going on, probably not showing the model to its best advantage. Click, click, cancel. Now I'm going to hit Control C and that'll set me up a camera. And then I'm going to hit here and break into my four pane view. Because what I need to do now is start setting up some lighting. Now I've got mental ray on, so I'm going to use some mental ray lights. So if I go to my standard lighting. And we'll have a mental ray area omni, and I'm going to have that basically straight across from the camera here. And then I'm going to move it up just a little bit. Like that, just so that it's light in the back part here. Okay, shadows are on, I'm using ray trace shadows. And just make sure it's not behind the wall if I can help it. Okay, so that will act as our 
rim light. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a target uh, mental ray area spotlight, which is going to come over our left hand side to here, and just lift that up. There we go, like that. Okay, so it's kind of like a skylight or a window or whatever, that's our main light. And then I'm going to do a third light just coming in from over here. Okay, and just pull that up like that. So now we have a three light solution. And I'm going to drop back down here to realistic. Hit F9. Well, you can see that, you know, it's not made any improvement whatsoever to our scene. What is going on here? Okay, well, I'll just cancel that and that. There we go. The actual culprit is the intensity of the light. Okay, so let's start off with the backlight here. And as you see at the minute, the intensity is just one. That's not going to be enough. Let's try 15,000. Okay, so now this is lighting the scene from the back here. And if we just hit F9, you'll be able to see we now have a strong shadow coming from the back here. And it's lighting the back part of our scene as well. I'm not going to bother letting it finish. Just, you know, kill it straight off. Now, we have our fill light. This is our kind of flat light here. And uh, let's see, it's multiplied as 1. Now, that we did 15,000. So maybe we should do 25,000, which is quite bright. And just hit F9 again. And now you see we're getting some uh, secondary light kind of coming in on the desk here, just from the right, which is creating shadows, which are obviously merging with the shadows coming from the back. OK, just click Cancel again. And now what about this main light here? Well, if that was 25,000, let's set that to 50,000 and just hit F9. And now you can see the main details being highlighted by this, with the secondary detail being highlighted by the fill light, and then lit from behind by the fill light, which gives it a kind of a corona around the back. Very easy to do. It's basically just a very simple and effective method of lighting an object up. And then all we have to do is just uh, stick an alpha on it, or take away the back plate altogether if you want. Just let it continue what it's doing. Nearly done. There you go. And, uh, I mean, it really is that simple, just to create a simple yet quite effective little lighting solution. And, I mean, this 3.1's really enough to manage most things that you'd want to do. I mean, I can just pull this forward here, like so, and just rotate it around. There we go, just rotate it like that. Put that over there. Maybe grab this, put it over here. OK, so now we've got a few things not seen, and you'll see that our simple three-point lighting calculation is able to keep up with it pretty well. I'll just pause this for a second. Now, I'm kind of bored of pausing this now. I'm just going to stop the render anyway. So let's compare that anyway. So this is our final render here. And if I just take away the parts we're not using now, or don't need, rather, delete that that and that. We'll keep the camera in. OK, just hit F10. I'm going to turn off my global illumination. Sorry, final gather. There we go. And we should just be using our default lighting now. There you go. So, as you can see, I mean, compare the default lighting to the result we get with three-point lighting. It's a very flat image. And, um, I mean, you can see the difference that a three-point lighting system just sets up for you. OK, so just have a mess around with it. Show any old model you've got into it and, uh, you know, have some fun. And uh, post up your renders on the forum. I look forward to seeing them. Bye-bye.